Level check. Microphone check. Microphone check out. Check, check. One, two. I'm too check tall one, for two. your green screen box. Yeah, you need to shrink, sir. Mm. You need to lower lower the... Whoa, there we go. Hello. Perfecto. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? Um, it's me, Ash, and I'm here with uh, design director Tim Schwalk. How you doing, buddy? Hi, guys. I'm great. It's been a while since you've been here. Been a little busy. You've been busy uh, making the game. Yeah, I've, uh, I have not been with this green screen. This is awesome. This is like a legitimate thing. Yeah, it's uh, Amazon.com. <laughs> they actually just have a, a wide assortment of green screens for you to purchase if you you know if you ever just want to fly through space or have submarine battles. Um, that's Wait, what I do. You're telling me we could have a stream with a submarine battle behind us? We can do all sorts of stuff. We're we doing could, this yeah, wrong. We can do all sorts of stuff. Maybe that's uh, we'll have new streams every week of just sub battles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. So, uh, I like how it. are you guys doing? Uh, let's do a really quick level check, make sure that we are okay sounding, and uh, then we'll get down to business. We'll get d down to brass tacks. Get down to brass tacks. I think my phone's making noises. Yeah, my phone is too. Sorry, we're, people. Uh, yeah, we're going to silence our cellular devices. Uh, so, we have a lot of really fun stuff today for. You know, for people that are excited about Community Pack 1, we actually are going to uh, go into detail about what's going to be in Community Pack 1. So um, I was annoyingly persistent and uh, sent some stuff out to you guys, and you helped me f fill out a whole assortment of, um, of, of great facts to share with the community uh, regarding mm -hmm. Community Pack 1. So we're going to go into a lot of detail about what Community Pack 1 will consist of. We have some uh, awesome screenshots of some of the visual assets that have been added, so uh, some of the outdoor environments that the artists are currently working on, and uh, some of the placeables and stuff. We're going to show you guys some of those. Uh, we're actually going to finally share the winners of our contest that we had back during Head Start 4, Head Start 5. So we have our winners, uh, and we're going to announce them here on the stream, and then we'll be in contact with the winners a little bit later. Uh, awesome. So it's going to be, uh, there's a lot in today's stream. Uh, and also for our longtime viewers, um, you might remember this this little bad boy here. Uh, it's upside down. Uh, this is a beefy, and this is uh, straight from our trip to Germany. Uh, this beefy actually expired on um, October 29th. Uh, However, October 29th. That was uh, last week. It was last week. So this is an expired German beefy. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with beefy, beefy is sort of a um, a prepackaged corn dog, if you will. It is like a a beef treat wrapped in bread that they sell in Germany. They don't Ash have them. Ash actually survived on these while we while we were in Germany for Gamescom. Every time we saw him, we'd yeah. have another one of these in his pocket. Yeah, basically, I would sneak these off, and while we were doing press and stuff, I would you know I would munch on these, and they're actually quite delicious. This is the last one from Germany. Uh, I was well, going to save it for our launch stream, but then we got so busy, I forgot to eat it. So I'm going to eat this last beefy, this expired beefy, and I may die on the stream so i let ash down i also brought back a beefy from germany yeah. and we were gonna have a nice toast cheers eat yeah. our beefies together someone stole your beefy i tore my pantry apart i have no idea what happened to my beefy but i didn't come with nothing i came with these german gummy candies so i'm gonna eat these while ash eats that beefy and we're gonna have a grand time <laughs> At least share a hearty meal. That's what we're doing. So uh, <laughs> on today's stream, again, we're breaking down Community Pack 1. We're going to announce the winners of our Head Start contest. We're going to be giving stuff away. We're going to be giving away uh, the good old-fashioned Mace of Terror. We're going to be giving away an ultra-rare Dagger of Venom. And also, um, we are going to be giving away a copy of the game at the end as nice. well. And we have lots of people here from Space. I saw Tony here earlier. I saw Tori here. I saw Drew from DE. I saw Tom in here, so there's a lot of end spacers here that can help answer questions if Tim or myself don't see your question come by quick enough. Um, so yeah, we're all here to hang out and uh, answer stuff for you guys. Um, also a big thing, uh, the the soundtrack is out today. Which oh is, nice. Which is really crazy. I love so, our music. Yeah, so uh, Inan Zur's soundtrack for Sword Coast Legends is available now on iTunes. And it is uh, really good. I'm not just saying that because I, I work on the game. I absolutely love the soundtrack. I'm a big soundtrack nerd. Are there, and I don't know the answer, are there other places to purchase rather than iTunes? Yeah, you can get it. Right, it's good. in a variety of uh, digital distribution places. I put a news story up on swordcoast.com. So if you uh, you know check out the news story, there's different links and different places you can buy it. Um, it's only $10, I think. I don't remember. Wow. Tony will know exactly how many tracks. So Tony will tell everybody in chat um, you know exactly how many tracks are. But there are a lot of tracks. They're all really pretty spectacular awesome We're nominated for all sorts of awards and stuff like that too so if you like yeah, the good music is it the credit song that was nominated yeah you guys heard the credit song yet oh the credits is the menu you don't have to beat the game yeah, yeah. i was going to be really impressed with some of you yeah i still am but 
how are we doing? Um, how are we doing on the statues? The statues are done. Um, from what I heard last, I heard last uh, that they're going to be shipping very, very. I'm not even going to say the S word. Shortly, they'll be shipping <laughs> shortly. I have not been given a definitive date. Uh, shortly is still shipping. an S word. Just uh, I heard it was uh, held up a little bit in customs, but uh, they should be on the way soon, along with a map. So for those of you who got the amazingly massive um, Belafoss statue, you should have it in your hot little hands very soon. I'm excited for mine. Me too. I'm excited for mine as well. Will you sign mine? If you'll sign mine. All right. This sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a plan. We'll, we'll make a stream of that. We're sign it kid style, just like all yeah. caps. Big right green crayon. His, yeah, right across his face. Oh, nice. man, what'd you do? Hey. Um, so let's go ahead and get down to business. Uh, we'll do the, the giveaways at the end. We'll award the winners of our contest at the end as well. But for now, we're just going to talk. We'll answer questions, and we'll dive into stuff. So Community Pack 1 is coming out next week. It's the first of our big community packs, and this was our way of looking at community feedback, looking at feedback in general, gathering that information, uh, kind of stewing over it, discussing it internally, figuring out what's best for the game, and then spitting that back out to the audience. So uh, the first thing is unlocking companion skill trees. So we announced that that's coming in CP1. And um, the question I asked you guys was, mm -hmm. uh, how will these skill trees differ from what they are in the player campaign, and how are they going to differ at all? So. What, so, what is the answer to that? Uh, very slight differences. The only changes we made were small tweaks so that you wouldn't have duplicate abilities. Uh, some of the companion trees might have had a second bless, for instance, under a different name, so that character might have that. So now when you get that tree, it'll be tweaked just a little bit so you don't have duplicates. But otherwise, you'll be getting the abilities those, those guys had, the same trees, if you're, of, if you're playing that same class. So you can't unlock ranger skills as a wizard and run around. That's correct. Ranger and you, wizard things, yeah. Okay. Right, and your rogue won't be running around doing necromancy. Cool. Well, that's great. Yes. Um, now, the other question that I knew people were going to act is, ask, or rather, is how are these uh, trees going to be unlocked for players? So. so this is cool. We wanted to make sure you sort of earned it because it's a fun thing to earn and find. But rather than just doing it when you complete the, uh, the companion quest, we tied it to the achievement that you get when you do the companion quest. And what that means is that anyone who's already done the companion quest for these guys, since you have the achievement, you'll automatically gain access to this stuff. And it'll work across all your characters, your entire account. Right. So once you unlock it once, you don't have to unlock it again, meaning right. that you're really, if you know, we would love for you to play through the campaign multiple times, but if you don't want to do that and you unlock the um, companion achievements, you'll actually unlock their skill trees across the board for all yep. of your characters. So you go so. go do Hamid's quest, which is a lot of fun. You unlock the necromancy tree, you start a new wizard, and you have necromancy there from the start. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So um, that's exciting, and you know, we know that's something you guys were clamoring for. We wanted to do it the right way. Um, and uh, I think this is the right way. So I'm really excited, actually, to, to get th these abilities on my characters. I haven't actually had a chance to play with it yet because it's still being plugged in. But um, I don't think I added to the notes, but there was one other, one other kind of cool perk. Uh, but like if you do a Lydia's tree, uh, she doesn't have the default cleric tree right now. She has her own. Mm -hmm. But I think if you do Same her, uh, yeah, if yeah. you do her companion quest, sorry, uh, she'll get that tree added as well. It's kind of another little bonus. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she gets the additional. Right. Oh, wow. I can't wait to see what that is. I'm actually pretty excited. So she has her own Priestess of Sehenin, but when you unlock her, when you defeat her companion quest, there'll be a whole new tree that For her. players haven't seen yet. Right. Yeah. Oh. Unless awful. I dreamt that, but that's how I saw it working. No, that's all right. Hey. <laughs> right. Who knows, right? No, it's exciting. It's good. And it was a, a highly featured request. And yeah. uh, we're, it's one of those things we wanted to do and we ran out of time for, so we're, we're glad to do it. Yeah. Well, let's look at some of these questions before we move on to the... Um, to, before we move on to the next section, so um, where is my trucker hat? Uh, this was a <laughs> gift. This was a gift for my birthday a few years ago. It's one of my favorite Happy hats. Happy birthday, Ash. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, when will DMs be able to open and close doors during live play? I know that that is definitely um, something that we've we've looked at. It might even be on our, our backlog list on the forums. I'm not entirely sure it if that is one is. It is on our DM hit list. It's yeah. So, for those of you who haven't seen, um, there are items that we announced for Community Packs 1, 2, and 3, and there's items we also put on the, you know, the backlog, and the backlog is information that we've gathered, that we're looking at, that we want it to be, we want it to be public facing, so we put it up on the forums. Um, you can look at it there, we're going to be picking items from that and adding items to that as we progress, and then, you know, adding those or, you know, removing those as we go. So, um, so yeah, so, not immediately, but, you know, in the future, maybe. Um, how do you do the companion quests? 
That's a good question. So how do you do the companion quest? If you progress in the story to a certain point, um, the companions will speak to you in camp, right. and they, they'll essentially send you on a specific quest that ties to um, you know their history and perhaps their background. Once you uh, complete that quest successfully, you'll actually get an achievement, a Steam achievement, and then uh, once that Steam, achie Steam achievement is done, you'll have access to their ability tree. That is exactly right. Cool. So just look for them in your camp, and when they have something really good for you, they will let you know, and they will give you that specific quest. And those are really great quests. Those are some of my favorites. Awesome. Sorry, I'm reading through these. Please, Ash, where are we with the correcting the quest trigger bug where you have uh, to change the status from friendly to neutral to reset the trigger? Um, all bugs are actively being looked at uh, by our mm -hmm. QA team pretty much all the time. So uh, if you if you have a particularly bad one that's blocking your gameplay, definitely reach out to me um, either on the forums or you can either DM me on the forums or you know there's a ton of different ways to get a hold of me and I'll run it by QA and see where we are. But you know actually we're we're actively researching and, and trying to fix all all of the things that you are running into. So yeah, I'm actually writing that one down because I wasn't familiar with it. I'm wondering if we may have already fixed that one or I'm going to look at it because that sounds like I a think bad that's one. An older one. I remember it being an older one. Uh, CP1 does come with an enormous number of bug fixes. Yeah, we're not really talking about too many of those bug fixes today, but I heard Sorry. there were quite a few. Yeah. I heard there was like a, 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 perhaps a million billion. One million the, billion. A million billion bug yes. fixes. Um, all right, so we're going to move on from companion-specific skill trees to the nature set. Um, so one of the cool things about the nature set, and we're actually going to show you oh, the brawn bug. They're asking about the brawn bug. Oh, that brawn bug. <laughs> we know the brawn bug. The brawn yeah, bug. it's at this point the brawn bug. It comical. is infamous. Who doesn't want brawn in, brawn in their campaign? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are working. We know that one. Yeah, we we love the brawn bug. Um, yeah. So the nature set. Uh, you know, this was a community request a while ago, and people were, were asking, like, why don't we just get a big <laughs> blank tile that we can dress up and, and do anything we want with? And that's what you guys are actually going to get in CP1. And while we don't have a, an it active in the build right now, um, it'll be active in CP1. But we do have some screenshots, so I'm going to jump on over to um, some screenshots and show you guys how this is going to work. So. So what you guys are going to get is a, a big, nice, empty, open tile, okay? And uh, I don't know the exact dimensions of this tile, but it is relatively large. And uh, you're also going to get something to the effect of how many placeables did we say? 171. 171 yeah. new placeables. Yeah, 171 new nature placeables. So with this, you can pretty much, I mean, I'm going to go on record and say you can make a lot of stuff with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that one down too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I I was just going through them and checking them out, and I was shocked at. It's not just decoration. You can create right. big walls and paths, and I have not seen these screenshots yet, so I don't I don't so, know what yeah, you're about so to this show is, us. But um, actually, one of our artists, John, he he just took these for me uh, right during his lunch break. So uh, we're going to show each of these kind of progress. And so this is the blank tile, and here is he's showing um, how he dressed it up. So it's the same tile. And all I did was place, you know, all of this stuff. So you're going to have access to trees and bushes and logs and different flower types and all sorts of, you know, 171 new outdoor placeables. And it is larger than the Liar's Night map. I saw someone ask that. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So here's another one we're going to show you. This is a, a nice empty path. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually draw this path in yourself, right? That's actually a um, something you place down. Uh, it must be. I have not seen the path yet. The yeah, path so I, I believe... Um, I was on... playing with all the walls and structures. Yes, so there's walls and structures, yeah, too. Yeah, I was having too much fun with that. I haven't even seen the paths yet. Yeah, so you can actually draw your own paths. Uh, so this is showing it in a relatively blank state. And uh, now we're going to show John after he dressed it up a little bit. So I'll go back and forth a couple times so to show you guys how that works. But, just based uh, on the screenshot, it's leading me to believe that the path may be part of the randomization of that tile. Because okay. even though we're giving this gigantic tile, there are still random elements to it that you can roll to, to get. Okay. So I'm guessing that path was already there. I don't know. Maybe maybe if John's watching, he can run and tell me. I forgot to ask him. I was going to ask him before well, I came in here. I would be surprised if you could place a path, because I've not seen us do anything like that. But these guys are miracle workers. We'll see. No. Wombat Chainsaw is saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. That means no, you can't make a path. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have this one. What about forest animals? Uh, they will not be in this particular patch, to my knowledge. This is all going to be environmental stuff. So you're not going to get your, your bunnies and your foxes. We have, we uh, have bunnies. This is showing uh, another path. Blank. 
and this is showing it after John dressed it up. Yeah, so there's some of the wall structure stuff I was playing with, but you can create your entire, you can change the entire layout and structure of the thing where you have to walk around these, these big castle wall. I mean, it's, it's really, really neat. I wish we had it live here, but... Next week. Next week we're actually okay. going to show off. Um, so before, um, you know, before everyone gets too excited... We hey, will, uh, Tom, you're on a delay. I already came to my senses. I said, there's no way we can, we're doing that. <laughs> Tom just Tom, came in Tom here. Tom just burst in here. Sorry, no. Wombat Chainsaw. He looked very forlorn when he said it, but he's like, you yeah. can't make a path. Yes. Um, so next week we're actually going to be showing this off in action. We might even uh, create a little uh, scenario using this new tile and play through it for, for the audience. And so we'll have some fun new stuff. I already have ideas of what I want to play through in front of everybody. So we're going to do a... A nice little, a little evil campaign that I'm gonna make. Why is everything evil with you? It's it's been a pretty evil month, man. <laughs> so, uh, so wait till you eat the expired beefy. Yeah, wait till you eat the expired beefy. So <laughs> anyway, so this is showing you some of the blank magic that you guys can uh, participate in coming soon. And uh, honestly, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Pretty pretty awesome stuff. So again, yeah. 171. New 171. That's Pretty that's crazy. A lot. That's, that's a pretty crazy. Number. Yeah. All right. So that's the nature nature set stuff. Uh, let me see if there's any quick questions before I can move on. There are no forest rabbits. I'm confirming that now. No forest rabbits. I thought um, we already had rabbits in there. Uh, we have. We have rabbits. We have rabbits. Yeah, yeah we, we have, have bunnies. Rabbits. I made them. Maybe they just want them to run around and. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about um, ability respec. Which again, uh, is something that a lot of people really wanted, especially with the addition of these new companion skill trees. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it would be really upsetting to people if you added new skill trees and all of a sudden right. you, you couldn't get those skills. Right. So uh, we are adding the ability to uh, uh, respect your character. So how is that going to work, Tim? So we have a training dummy in your camp again, and it, I think we called it a uh, retraining dummy. I don't remember what we called it, but you go and you speak to this guy and we're going to give you a menu on screen. And from that menu, you can see all the companions you've unlocked along with your main character. Am I spinning? Am I <laughs> moving? Spinning. Okay. You should have given me a chair uh, that I'm moves. Totally. Sorry. Next time I'll make you sit on the stool. Uh, and uh, from that menu, you will see uh, the cost to respect that character and you can choose to do it there and you can see how much gold you have. Uh, basically, uh, we're, we're tweaking the cost now to find that right value, but it's going to charge per point um, that way it's something that you have access to early on if you want to respec after level two or three, whatever. And you still have access to it later on if you have 40 points. It's just going to, the cost will change based on that. Yeah. But I, I was playing with it today. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. It's another one of those things we really wanted to get in the game, didn't have time for, and we're delighted to do it now. Yeah. So ability yeah. respec is confirmed. Uh, you'll have access to it in your camp. Mm -hmm. It'll cost a little bit of money. It is based on point. Um, so each point will cost an additional monetary value. And right. then from there, you know, that way, those rich level 20 guys that are just rolling in the dough, they won't I have I got somewhere to spend it now if yeah. you want to respect your whole party. That's right. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. Respect your whole party is going to be a pretty penny. So that's, yep. that's pretty exciting. Um, so again, he's found inside the player's party camp. Um, let's move on and talk about the player's stash. Yes. So this is exciting. Um, you know, this was a huge community request because, believe it or not, you guys like collecting items and stuff. Apparently. And I saw a lot of people that, um, you know, even found quest items and such that they didn't want to get rid of. They didn't want to delete them. They wanted to save them. And I remember being a big MMO player, and I would just save everything. My bank was absolutely just exploding with, like, old garbage. That's interesting. And it all had sentimental value. I was like, oh, man. I'm the opposite. Oh, really? You delete like, everything? In my real life, I save everything, but when I'm playing a game, I don't like it to get cluttered because I want to uh, make sure I know where all the good stuff is. So I'm selling constantly. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, you know, different folks. Right. Right. But at the same time, uh, we're adding a stash to Sword Coast Legends. Yep. We're going to use the existing guild chest that's already in your party camp and at the beginning of the game. And you'll be able to place things into that. You'll see an interface very similar to the vendor where you see your stuff and you see on the other side, you see your stash. Uh, you can put things there. You can actually destroy things from the stash if you want to get rid of them forever and ever. Um, you cannot put quest items in there. And the reason for that is the uh, stash itself is going to be account wide. So if you want to share items with your, your other characters, that is a possibility now. 
That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. So just, just to, just to, I know you're dropping the item. <laughs> uh, so just to clarify for everybody, he just said that your your chest is going to be account wide. So that means you're going to be able to share items uh, between your characters. Um, obviously, you can't share quest items because that would break the game. So uh, you can share non quest items between your right. characters. So um, entirely possible to twink your characters out. You know. Oh yeah, 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 totally, totally. If you really want to do that, that if that's if that's your mo, you can you know go on search for items for your low, lower level characters and share it. You know, similar to you know how um, some other games have been doing it, but uh, pretty awesome that the mm -hmm. player stash is going to be in the next patch and you'll be able to Super handy, store right? all your stuff and share all your stuff and uh, it's in a very convenient location, so mm -hmm. you'll be able to get access to it very quickly and early in the game. So absolutely. Questions about how much space. I actually don't know the answer to that. I don't know if you know the answer to that. I either. do. Uh, we're playing with it now. Right now, it's got a, a limitation on the number of things to fit in there, but there's no weight limitation. Uh, right now, it's it's at 100. Again, I don't I don't know if we'll leave it at that. It's really gonna f how you guys use it, what we run into. Um, yeah. But we we can we're very flexible with it. You know what we should do? We should charge through microtransactions to make the chest space bigger. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I get the biggest kick out of people that think we're just waiting to drop the microtransactions on people. Um, that is not this game, people. Yeah, it's so, not what we're doing. Um, you sure? I mean, <laughs> sure. I need to get more beefy. It's, All right, uh, it's going to cost really, four ninety nine for every one hundred items you want to stash. It's really expensive to import it. We looked today. I was I'm, so forlorn that I didn't have my beefy. We looked on Amazon. It, yeah. Was it sixty bucks for a box? Yeah, it's a lot. So if any any German Sword Coast Legends uh, follower has a beefy and wants to send us. Can DMs deny the use of collective collected items? Um, n no. Deny, deny the, use, the use? use of collected items. So can the DM prevent you from entering your chest? Um, I don't. I'm not following. I, so I'm not really. Clarify that question. Maybe I can help you out. So um, uh, right totally now the DM has no interaction with the stash. It's just a, a player yeah, thing. So they can't the, stop you from. Yeah, the no. DM can't enter your stash and do terrible things, so... No, or prevent you from doing anything with it. Um, with the items you can get, you use them in DM mode. Please need a way for the DMs to give custom loot. Okay, so, yeah, we've gotten lots of lots of requests for DM custom loot, and it is on, you know... Uh, everyone everyone teased me for talking about the list, but the list is, is very much a real thing, yeah. and it's very, it's very much something the entire team looks at and talks about and discusses and... And it's something on. I. It's higher on my list as well. Yeah. And I, I I've been watching some of the streams you guys are doing, and, and I love seeing some of the the role playing stuff. So yeah. that that is something we want to support. So we're, we're not ignoring that. We're hitting the stuff that people wanted the most has been the most uh, questions about. But that is definitely on, and it is a real list. It's on the list. It's something that I, I'd really like as well. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read this name. It's in blue font. Um, I I do both. Esquito, uh, I keep seeing your your request for a civilian set, and uh, you know this is just uh, the the very tip of the iceberg with new placeables and new sets. So we figured nature was a great thing to help people start, you know, their campaigns, expanding upon their campaigns. Yep. 171 new items um, coming up, you know, next week and more in the future. So uh, there may be a civilian set in the future. I don't know. I don't I haven't there's, seen the plans. Uh, there's for that. something on the list we want to do, which is to allow you guys to set uh, patrol points. And that would be something that would be really handy with civilian set. Right now we give it to you and you just sort of place them around, which it's something that we have on the list still. But uh, I would like to combine it with uh, the patrolling stuff so you can get both at once. I think that would be the most helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, are we talking about gold yet? There's a question about how gold will be shared if it's going to be shared in chests. Or is it just going to be... Um... Uh, that is not in for this update, but it is. it will be coming soon. Okay. Yeah. So not now, but eventually gold. So Now, for the stash, being able to share gold across... Uh, characters. I don't. That probably will not be in there for CP1, but that is something we were looking at today, actually. All right. So we already answered where it's going to be located, right? Same place as existing. Same place the chess already is, which is in the party camp and in the very first area of the game. Let's uh, let's skip skill rolls and come back to those, and let's actually show off some of these new monster abilities. So let's go ahead and switch on over. Okay. And. I'm going to switch the camera real quick. Um, so one of the things that we added, and we actually added um, a lot of monster abilities There's to more this than pad. 100 new. Yeah, so we have more than 100 new monster abilities that are actually being added in Community Pack 1. And that means, of course, that they're going to be organized a little bit differently as well. So um, 
again, over 100 new monster abilities. So for those of you who are really creative DMs and you, you want a whole lot of new stuff to play with with your monsters and your, you know, your companions and your, and so, sorry, your NPCs, you're going to have a lot of fun stuff to play with. So we have, of course, the, the classes, wizard, cleric, fighter, rogue, paladin, ranger, and now there's a drow specific. Nice. Drow specific. So if you really want to get in there and build your own little custom drow set, um, complete with a whole ton of new drow abilities, here are the drow abilities. So again, we're looking at over 100, so I'm not going to go through all these. It would take a very long time. So we also have beast. So you can customize your own beasts. You don't, you don't necessarily have to give them to beasts, right? You could give no, this dude right, your beast right, abilities. Right. right, so we can give you know we can give this wizard guy bite if we want. So right. uh, new undead abilities, fire explosion, choking ash. Hey, wait. Hey. hey oh. oh hey, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> aberrations, goblinoids, Duragar, a whole lot there. I mean, everyone is going to give everything this. Grow. <laughs> it it's, it's the best ability in the I game. I didn't realize you added Grow. That is the best. Yeah, it is really That's my favorite enemy awesome. to, to modify as a DM is the, uh, oh, I forget the exact. Infernal Quills is also visually. Brad, uh, who does a lot of the, the visuals for our spell abilities. All of the. All of them. <laughs> Brad's amazing. Yeah, so yeah. this one I think he really, really knocked it out of the part. Infer Infernal Quills is just a gorgeous looking spell. It is. Oh, I right. love that Grow's on there. Yeah. Cultists, we have all new cultist stuff. Giant. Troll regen for those of you who want to make really, really obnoxious monsters. <laughs> all right, so gilded, gilded eye. eye, demon, and then back to wizard. So again, there's over a hundred for you guys to play with now, which is a uh, pretty exciting stuff. And um, again, there's more to add, and we haven't added them all. So <laughs> we're, we're still working on it. <laughs> yeah, we haven't added them all. So you still... know, it's challenging because we have to make sure that they actually function and don't, you know, in players' hands, they don't make things explode. So yeah, just just testing all hundred and whatever there are on every single type of enemy as we're still going through it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Give it's an undertaking. Too. All right. So let's go back to the cam real quick. Look at some of these questions that came through. Sure. Um. Uh, so yes, yeah, so it's always 42 asks uh, any update regard how loot works in multiplayer. There's still a huge greedy player issue even in campaigns. Absolutely, um, I want to say off the top of my head that that's going to be addressed in Community Pack Two. It's into yes. Yeah, so Community Pack Two, we are going to address loot and looting. No further details on that right now because uh, we want to get really crystal clear specific details on how that's going to work, and it's not ready for uh, public consumption yet. So just know that that, you know, that'll be in Community Pack 2 is aiming for the end of the month. So yeah, we will have a solution to loot and looting and greedy people by the end of the month. And we're not we're not just doing this in a vacuum. We've read all the comments you guys are putting on the forums and in these chats and uh, we're listening to what you guys are saying, what you're wanting and we're uh, talking about the best way to make everyone happy with that. <laughs> Someone says they're going to send us beefy when uh, branching dialogue happens. <laughs> I will accept your beefy when the branching dialogue happens. I will I will lovingly accept it. We did get some uh, exotic jerky already from Jim Brennick. We did, yeah. That was fantastic. It was great. I, I had was, kangaroo jerky. I was out of town, but you saved me a piece. I saved you some buffalo. Yeah, man. It hit the spot. I think I ended up eating it one of the days where I streamed for like five or six hours, like a Saturday. I usually refuse to eat on those days and only drink energy drinks. It's true. So that probably it's kept true. you alive. I'm hoping that one day my heart explodes live on the stream. I don't want to be there for like that. A, like alien style, <laughs> wow. ch just chest burster. <laughs> anyway, we will eat anything you send us. <laughs> you send us something, we'll eat it and we'll appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We'll give you a uh, dagger venom for it. Yeah, dagger venom for uh, for beefy. I mean, we're, now we're just bartering. It's you, true. You send us exotic meat products, and we will give you digital. How many codes. maces of terror would it yeah. take? Um. Let's see. So we have monster abilities. Uh, let's see. Tim's going to talk to you while I get the thing set up. We're going to show you the new okay. rolling system in action here. Um, so let me, give me a second here. I'll get it all queued up. And Tim, we'll just talk to you and take some questions. All right. Let's see. Thanks for the sponsor, Tori. Ash. Will we be able to remove the core spell skill set on the NPC that are already in there in the creature set? Uh, right now, you cannot just because those are sort of vital to their tactics. Um, if that's something you want to do, uh, we can look at it. Um, I don't see any reason we wouldn't be able to do it, but we've we've left a default there. You choose a guy, he's got his core stuff, and uh, as you've seen, you can add to it. Uh, Jim is here. Thank you, Jim. You are a hero. Ash, can you pronounce gelatin's cube, please? 
Let's request. Uh, gelatinous cube. Gelatinous cube. I learned. I learned. I learned it the hard way. Let me tell you. It took me a while. Uh, mechanics question. Will equipment bonus stacking be removed? Will, will the wizard get more spells in their trees? So I know there's a lot of controversy about the, the uh, equipment st bonus stacking, the buff stacking. Uh, we're, we're talking about it. Uh, we have nothing, nothing to act on right now that we can talk about, but uh, we do hear you on that as well. Uh, the wizard getting more spells in their trees. Uh, right now, you'll get access to the necromancy tree. You'll get access to the uh, Dalinar tree. I forget what it's called. But uh, at this moment, we're not adding, adding more to that right now, no. Why does In Space hate halflings? You know, that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> you play through the game, you're like, sort of a halfling sort of racist thing, right? No, we love halflings. I don't know. I think it's Jay. Ask Jay why he hates halflings. Yeah, that's true. It's all Jay Turner. What about increasing the amount of abilities a custom monster can have? I'm going to ask about that. That's probably easy to do. That is, uh, there might be some silly limitation. I don't know of which why we limited it to 10, but if that is an easy thing, Does we'll this do it. Can you reach this keyboard? We might have to swap places because I want you to actually, you know the commands. Uh, sure. So we're, uh, Tim and I are going to do a fire drill here. Um, I'm going to switch the cam in just a sec. So we're going to swap places. Whoa. Don't worry, I caught that thing, whatever it was. It's the thing that makes everything work. Hello, everyone. Check, check, check. All right, so let me just switch this. Let me this. take my notes I was writing on. All right, so we are um, going to quickly show you how the new skill roll system works. And uh, this is really cool, especially for those of you who like to live DM. I see a couple. Uh, my head's missing again. Oh, I need to shrink, yeah. Uh, for those of you who like to live DM, this is going to really, really make you very happy. Um, so let's go ahead and show off what we've got going here. Uh, so just the old basic stuff is there. You can do a roll. It'll just roll a d20 for you. Oh, I'm a DM, aren't I? So as a DM, whoever I click, it's going to roll on them with their stats, their bonuses. So why not a Zaxu? <laughs> uh, you'll notice one change we made is just the way that we show it to you. Uh, before, if I did a roll 2d20, uh, you would have seen two numbers. And, but now you'll see we rolled a 7 and a 16, and I get 23. So we go ahead and show it in a row. We total it up for you. It's just a little bit cleaner, and it shows you who rolled it. Um, so that's just a, a minor thing that we did. You can add any sort of bonus onto that that you want. You can do a roll d20 plus 5. And it'll just do that automatically for you as well. But wait, Ash, there's more. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can do uh, rolls with built-in bonuses. I can roll, I can do roll 1d20 plus strength. And wow, that is really terrible. That was a terrible roll. But uh, you can, you, where'd my game go? Sorry, I was fixing the volume. Oh, sorry. You're, you're just close to the mic. I don't want you to explode them. Oh, I'm sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's a little too hard to do, you can also just do roll against strength. And <laughs> don't game's mind. gone again. I don't, don't know what Ash don't is mind, doing. Don't mind me, Tim. I feel All like right. this is, I'm Here being punked. Does he really have a zero? I guess he has a zero strength bonus. Uh, you can drop whatever monsters you want if you want to use a specific one. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just, just showing off the system. Yeah. But the idea was to make it really easy. You can even do check, check decks. So if you want to do roll or check, it does it for you. And it'll roll the d20, it'll add your, your dex bonus to it. So that's just really simple, straightforward stuff that you can do. Um, you can link all this stuff together. I can do roll 2d8 plus, whoops, I can't type. 2d8 minus uh, 2 plus dex <laughs> plus proficiency bonus and you get it all in there <laughs> whoa uh, there's no real reason you would ever need to do go that. math I'm just showing you all the different things you can do you have access to all the core stats you can type it out uh you can uh abbreviate it there is no uh, calculation as a matter that it's not case sensitive and of course you have access to your proficiency as well uh, more cool things you can do you can roll advantage or disadvantage so you can do advantage roll and so I rolled a 14 and a 4, which gives me 14. And you can do, uh, what do we call it? Is it dis roll? Yes, I rolled a 4 and 8, so I get a 4. And of course, you can do those with anything. I can roll an advantage roll plus my proficiency bonus. And that didn't work. What did I do wrong? Well, I did something wrong, but that works. I've done it. 
So yeah, that'll make live DMing much, much easier. Um, you know, you can do all sorts of really fun checks with your players, and we're hoping that people actually, um, you know, ho hopefully they use this. Uh, you know, we'd love to see more live DM games, and the ones we have seen have just been absolutely incredible. So uh, this, I think, will help help out a whole lot, considering it actually takes your equipment bonuses into effect. And what build do you have? Uh, I just grabbed latest internal. Weird. Uh, this does work. I've tested it. I'm sure Tom can tell us what I'm doing wrong, but, uh, but yeah, you can add any stats or anything to these uh, advantage or disadvantage rolls, because I did it before. And you can do dumb things like roll 10. Oh, there 20, it is. Dis roll plus prof. You know what I did? I oh, know. you know what the problem is? You can't put a space. Uh, yeah, there it is. Magic. Actually, that still just gave me my advantage roll. Well, whatever it is, we'll figure it, it out. It does work. I've done it, and it will work by the time you get it in your hands. So that'll be really fun. That'll be that'll be super awesome. Hmm. You want to do? Let's let's swap out. Swap back. Really? Yep. I could just hand you the beefy stick. <laughs> oh, I forgot I have to eat that. And hello again. No, I'm excited to see people using that in their their live games. Me too. Absolutely. All right. Well, those fix your stuff, Tim. I know. Let me go back here. You were adding a space after the plus minus. Was I? Who knows? Well, it works. I've seen it work. Does the chat window stay open after this update? We were just talking about that yesterday because it's so irritating. I don't know if it's in this update, but it's coming. Yeah, absolutely. We, we get a lot of requests for that one. Yeah. All right, so right now we Yes, have players can roll and DMs can roll. Looked at companion-specific skill trees. We looked at how they're unlocked. We looked at the nature set. We looked at ability reset. Sorry. We looked at respec vendors. Uh oh, Tom's we here. We looked at players. <laughs> uh oh, he always comes bearing good news. No, he always comes. He like always comes thirty seconds too wrong. late. <laughs> While Matt Chainsaw will rush into the the streaming room and be like, "You just lied about something." <laughs> well, he and Tommy are responsible for the dice rolls. He probably feels bad that they don't work. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I, I did it at my desk. It was fine, but I was on a build from yesterday. You kept. Uh, Thrutter, this will actually be going out next week. We should make it a little more We haven't more announced the exact launch time yet, but it's, it's for sure coming next week. So um, stay tuned to our social channels, and we will let you know absolutely um, when this goes live. In fact, if they pay attention to that little corner thing on the main menu of Sword Coast Legends, yeah. I think we're going to update that soon to reflect that. Awesome. Because uh, we can give you cool messages. Absolutely. What do you say we give some stuff away? I love giving stuff away. Are we going to do trivia? We're gonna do we're gonna do trivia this week. So uh, you can eat your beefy stick first, or yeah, let's do it. All right, sorry guys. So for those of you who have never partaken or seen a, a beefy, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm, just, I'm not gonna eat the whole thing because it's quite a meal. Um, I'm gonna eat part of it here on the stream. It looks uh, like a nondescript breadstick. These smell amazing. I got these from my hotel room. They probably cost ten dollars. Man. Oh my gosh. This is delicious. This is awesome. Do we ever talk about how great the food in Germany is? And this doesn't count. This is worth going to Germany just for a beefy. I am so mad my beefy's gone. One more bite and then we'll get started. What was it we have to do to get someone to send us a case of beefy? Oh, uh, conversation, branching conversation. All right. We're on it. Mmm, fire shield goblins. I like that idea. Man. That's some good gummy. Showing mm. my BP. Showing my BP <laughs> on the stream. No wonder there's uh, less viewers this week. Hey, BP greetings from Germany. We love your country. Thank you, Subwatcher, for my name is German. such delici delicious um, fake corn dogs. And gummies. Mm. All right. So we are going to do some trivia. Uh, Drew from DE, if you are here, sir, would you mind sounding off to make sure you're here? Because you are going to be the one who determines the winner of this trivia. Uh-oh. I didn't give him the answers to our trivia questions. He knows them. I'll just wink at him. That won't help. We can... We can yeah, they're up. easy. They're easy. They're easy. They're easy trivia questions. All right. What so, are we giving away first? The first one is uh, for a Mace of Terror. Now, people is, I see saying that they stop using their Mace of Terror a couple hours in. I still use that Mace of Terror. If you run into me online, I'm playing yeah. with Mace of Terror because it's so cool. Well, the other thing that's that's really cool about it is you get it across your account. So whenever you start a new right. character, 
you don't have to start with like a, a, a tin foil weapon. You start with a mm -hmm. uh, an amazing. I love the Mace of Terror. So um, I do too. You know, for your new characters, it is a great a great weapon. It'll last you, I would say, at least probably to level four or five. It just feels powerful too. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's unique too. It's so, very unique. Yeah. Um, so, Mace of Terror. Here we go. Um, what is Larathar's companion skill tree called? I know. Obviously, the first one that gets it will uh, get a Mace of Terror. Mm, French fries. Fritz. You know, in Germany, they all serve ma with mayonnaise. I never had mayonnaise with French fries before. It was amazing. Palm Fritz. Mace in my face. Mace in my face. That's not what it's called? No, it's not called that. Oh, my goodness. I went to... Uh, what's the Greek community near Tampa? Had the most amazing Greek food. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tarpon Springs. Wow. Never been. Yeah, it was delicious. I think we've got quite a delay here. Carouser, oh. saw it. There we go. So it looks like Arlo uh, Cleric. Arlo gets it. Congratulations, Congratulations Arlo. Arlo. Nicely That's done. Good one. All right. So the next one is for a another Mace of Terror. Um, this one is for people who have been paying attention. How many new nature objects are there? How, How many lot. new nature objects are there? Mm -hmm. I'm cheating because I already forgot. I remember. Yep. It's pretty good. We'll see if anybody remembers this. Oh, Suvlaki. Oh, you guys make me hungry. I'm going to have another one of these whiny thingies. You know, there's a Polish restaurant by my place that's really good. I have not had Polish food. You should come out, man. Well, you live really far, but yeah. Come well, we can meet at Walmart halfway. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring me some Polish food. There we go. Mmm. Yeah, Tarpon Springs shot up. Who's that? Don Bro. No, wait. Yes. It was a blue one. Don Bro. I it was Don, Don Bro. Bro. I believe Don Bro got it right, but Drew will Drew will double check. The answer was 171, so the first person Congratulations! Get 171 is the winner, so congratulations, Mace of Terror. Um, I see a question about changing hostility states simultaneously. That is a big one on the list, but not just that. Being able to do anything to a group of creatures, that is a right. big one. That's what drives me the most crazy when I'm DMing, but we sort of erred on giving you more stuff to do for launch than uh, being able to do some of these things more easily, but that is certainly on our list. Drew's lagging a little bit behind, but he can already tell the questions <laughs> and answers billion. just from chat. We'll do our best to be honest with these guys, and if something weird happens, just let us know and we'll rectify it so it's not like... Yeah, if we call out the wrong winner, just let us know and you can both get one. <laughs> just email me. <laughs> uh, Alright, here's this is a more challenging one. Uh, when did Ash's beefy expire? <laughs> uh, his German beefy stick that he ate on stream. Um, clarify. Oh, pierogies, man. Oh, Dixie Crossroads is amazing. Have you been there? Mm -mm. It's uh, a lot of food. It's the right place. So the question again um, was, when did Ash's beefy expire? Um, if you're having network connection issues, please do reach out to our customer service because we've been working with people Ooh. individually. So we're not <laughs> Drew, seeing a lot of that. Drew won it. <laughs> hey, the almighty Drew. Drew, that was fast. Congratulations. So, yeah, the, the answer was uh, October 29th. Does he already have a Mace of Terror? I'm sure he might. Because sure collecting them doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Yeah, if you already have one, share, on your share it with your, your viewers or something. So right. congratulations, Drew, uh, for winning a Mace of Terror. I'm pretty sure he has one by now. He's been he's been around these parts for a while. Yeah. Um, this next one is also for a no. This one is actually for a dagger of venom. Ooh, these are far more rare. These are far more rare. So dagger of venom was uh, given away just with um, if you went to an RA Salvatore book signing for uh, Archmage, uh, you actually were able to get one on a bookmark. They're super rare. Again, it's an account-wide uh, item that you get for all of your characters. It's pretty awesome. Um, and here is the question. Um, what are the names of three new monster ability sets? Is that the best way to phrase that? Yep. You showed about eight new sets. Eight you just need sets. three of those names. Three names for the there new eight, monster ability sets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There were ten. Ten. And you only need to name three of them. That should be pretty easy. I can think of them. German Twinkies. I didn't have that. Wow. I feel like I just had lunch and yet I'm already ready for dinner. You didn't eat, did you? 
I ate lunch today. You did? You never eat on stream days. I oh, know. What did you have? Uh, I had a salad from Pantera oh, Bread. Just Pantera Bread? Okay, maybe <laughs> that counts. I see Undead Dorgar Drow from Rogue of Scrolling Too Quickly, Gallifrey. Is that the first one? Undead Dorgar Drow, that was right. Nicely Rogue, done. Rogue of Gallifrey. We have Drow first. Undead. So, congratulations, Rogue of Gallifrey. You have won a code for the Dagger of Venom, unless I didn't read quick enough quickly enough but i think i think you were the first i believe so congratulations congratulations the last one is an actual code for the game although Ooh. i'm assuming that most of the people here already have the game but it's a copy that you can give to your friends so that is an additional steam copy of sword coast legends um and of course the fastest answer is going to get this additional copy you can you can give it away to a friend you can sell it on the streets gray market steam codes that's a thing <laughs> you can you can don't do don't do that. Just give it to someone you can, you go, can, you can play go to with. elementary schools and you can sell it to the kids. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sure, you can trade some poor kid their lunch money for a copy of Sword Coast Legends. You can do that. Um, so this is a, could be a slight spoiler, very very light spoiler. Has to do with the main campaign of the story. But what is Olivia searching for in the campaign? And the answer is not Larathar's love. You waited for the easiest question for the the biggest prize. I would have put the beefy one on this, maybe. Yeah? It's really easy. It's good that Twitch has an awesome lag. Yeah, I, I always wonder if these giveaways, the ones that people know immediately, is it the person that knew it the fastest, is the person whose stream was the least the person, behind? <laughs> the person who puts the connection speed down to super low. Right, they're on low, they can barely see us, it's on audio only. See, Drew does know the answers, I knew it. Oh, oh, I see one. Kellandros? Uh, it looks like Kellandros. Congratulations. Yeah. Drugs. <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. That is not what you... Uh, okay, like so the answer stuff. was the moon tier. Very, very good. Underpants. Awesome. Cheese. Well, that's it for our giveaways for now, force. guys. Um, we have <laughs> our, our last sort of bigger prizes to give away. Let me find the correct sheet of paper that has Oh, these are great. It. All right, so um, you know, a few weeks ago at this point, I think it was maybe three weeks ago. No, actually, what's today's date? The 5th? It's 5th. So it was November a month 5th. ago. So uh, October 5th, we announced a contest where we were going to be looking through a lot of different modules. Uh, so the team looked through modules. I looked through modules. Um, we looked through a lot of different streams. And essentially, we just had three different categories. We had best streams, we had best writing and stories, and we had best modules. And uh, the winners of these three prizes, uh, sort of these grand prizes, you're going to get your very own Belafoss statue signed by the whole team. Wow, really? Yeah, signed by the whole team, which is really cool. And mine's only going to be signed by you. I know. I should have entered yeah. a contest. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you're going to get a signed Belafoss statues. Um, we'll do our best to not to completely defile the statue itself. We'll sign the base so uh, so you can still display the statue proudly if you don't That's want a, awesome. a bunch of uh, dev signatures all over it. So. Uh, the first is going to go to uh, the first for streams is going to go to so this like best stream, best live stream, best stream. So what I did is I, I watched a lot of live streams and there are a lot of really incredible ones. But the, the ones that st stood out to me the most were by um, Synarchy X. Did you ever watch him? Uh, this was back during Head Start. Was he I want to say Head Start 4, Head Start 5. He was streaming all the time. He'd do a lot of live DMing. He'd use... Um, you know, different voices. He had this great scenario that I watched where he actually had the players doing um, wisdom checks to close these portals and demons were popping out of the portals. Nice. And he's like, he basically interacting them in real time and doing this really incredible stuff. And he streamed all the time. So, um, so Synarchy X on Twitter, uh, congratulations. You are one of the winners. Congratulations. That's is, a big prize. That's, that's a really awesome. big prize. Um, the other winner, it's kind of exciting because he's actually here in the chat right now. Um, best writing and story, uh, I went with uh, Joe Coleman. Joe Coleman, what did he write? Uh, I didn't write the name of the module down in my well, haste. I was about to go promote it, so it could be a promoted I module. Actually, yeah, I I'll forgot. Find it. Yeah, he wrote a, a couple of really great ones, and I w ran through, I want to say, at least two of them. Um, he, you know, does some really cool stuff. He actually reviews other people's uh, modules and does video reviews of other people's modules and really gets into in-depth analysis nice. and really gets into um, 
manipulating and modifying the tools to the best of his ability to make really creative scenarios for his players. So uh, he promoted soundboards for use with his own modules and said, hey, if you want to use the soundboard with this particular module, linked it up that way. That was really cool. He had really, really great DM notes for his DMs. He had uh, different versions of the same module uh, that could be used either with a live DM or with a non-live DM. So he basically modified that's his That's awesome. Own really cool stuff. He's totally um, embracing, right. embracing it for what it is, right? And, that's, uh, that's fantastic. It was uh, all I wrote down. It was all well written with a great, a great hook. A lot of custom monsters. A lot of really custom, really cool custom stuff. So well, let's promote his uh, campaign. We're going to do that after the stream. We're going to yeah. do that. Um, Get it featured. And uh, best modules, uh, the Fallen God series by Lord Tachyren. Nice. I, I've heard about this. I've not yeah, played it. Yeah, I played through both of these Fallen God series. They're they're awesome. Again, tons of custom objects, tons of custom environments. I want to say in the first Fallen God series, you actually start off on the interior of a castle, and it completely looks unlike anything I had seen before. So he, he remade the castle interior mm -hmm. to look like the interior of a guild hall. Everything was all custom. He had custom NPCs everywhere. All sorts of things to interact with and talking people to talk to. It was awesome, and so uh, he's already on part two of the Fallen Guard, uh, Fallen God series. We're going to so. feature that one too. Yeah. That's so fantastic. Um, really, guys, there were so many, and uh, I wish I had more time to go through more and more of them. Uh, so you know, some people submitted theirs, some people's we just stumbled across. It was. Um, you know, really incredible to to experience your creativity, and it's one of the the best perks of my job. I absolutely love it. If I could just sit there and play through your modules all day, I would do that. Um, but hold on, did your computer really just lock in the middle of the stream? It's all right. It doesn't really do anything. <laughs> in theory, okay. So uh, welcome so to the party, go. pal. Somebody joined. I didn't see who. Uh, somebody joined. I didn't see that as well. But uh, so that's that's really that's really great stuff. Yeah, so we, um, if you're in the stream and you know we shouted you out. First of all, thank you. Uh, we so, really appreciate it. Yeah, so Joe Coleman, thank it's you. fantastic. I know that you, again, Joe Coleman, have uh, been reviewing other people's modules as well and, and giving really, like, honest, kind, constructive criticism. So, um, oh, there we go. Assault so one, on Greenest. Yeah, Assault on Greenest is the one with the awesome. soundboard. So really good stuff. Um, so definitely check out Joe Coleman's reviews of other people's modules. Check out his modules and see, like, some of the really super creative things that you can do. And uh, congratulations to everybody. Yeah, really, awesome. seriously, congratulations and thank you. Yeah, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do more of these. So that's a great giveaway. I'm glad we did that. That's that's yeah. really fun. That was Mr. Tudge's idea. Well done, Dan Tudge. Yeah, said, well give done. Give stuff away. I was like, no, I don't want to. And he's like, you better. And I was like, okay. Can we give away another copy of the game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let's do it. Oh. You got to think of a trivia on the fly, though. On the fly. Uh, can it be about my gummies? Sure. All right, what was the brand name of these these delicious gummies I was eating? For a copy of the game, <laughs> welcome to the party, Digadum. I like it. We're looking for the name of these delicious gummies. The brand name, sorry. I assume that's the brand. It is. It's actually not just a German brand. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my wife gets those at um, Epcot. Maybe from the German not pavilion? Not the German pavilion. <laughs> sure. Welcome to the party, Spunkin. This is exciting, giving away a copy of the game based on some... Oh, wait! Arabo, congratulations, Mountain Gamer 1! Oh, nice! You're the grand prize he winner! He already has the game, too. Then uh, he can find something fun to do with it. Look at these people, all know this gummies. I can't remember what it <laughs> was. Hasbro! <laughs> Ask you the actually <laughs> racist is. <laughs> Jay? Jay Turner. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Jay that was Turner. fun. That was a good time. So, yeah. um... We'll be in contact. If you want a game code, um, reach out to me on the forums. I know uh, you guys that did win game codes, you already do contact me on the forums, so just contact me there. I'll pass along your code, and you can you know, choose to give it away or do whatever you want with it. Um, I was joking about going to elementary schools and giving it to, to children there. Please He's actually not allowed within 200 feet. <laughs> no. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, we're going to be trying, I, I say this all the time, but we're going to try and be streaming more. We're going to be showing off more of your content. It's been a very, very busy time. Uh, look for Community Pack 1 next week. Uh, look for a stream highlighting more specific information about Community Pack 1 before it goes live. So before it goes live, we are going to do a stream that highlights and shows off a lot of the, the new stuff in action. Yep. Uh, we might even go ahead and build some really fun areas for you to play with the, the new nature set. So Definitely. Um, we'll make something for you guys to play around in. Thanks to all the contest winners. You guys are great. 
Um, you guys, honestly, it is super cool to see the things that you make. And uh, if you guys are having fun with the game, please tell your friends, spread the love. Yeah. Love to get more people, more people playing. More, more people liking it. Yeah. Yeah. We're still out there playing too. I uh, love seeing you guys online and uh, look forward to playing some more with you. Yep. Is DLC coming out after CP3? Yes. Is Jay Turner writing the Rage of Demons DLC? Yes. Yes, he is. Jay, is that you asking that? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, Mad Hatter's looking for... So we're going to add a... Well, oh, gonna... Mad Hatter did send me a message about this. I, uh, Mad yeah. Hatter, I actually asked Ross about this. Uh, I haven't heard back from him yet, but as soon as I hear back from him, I'll tell you, buddy. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and add a, like a modding forum, right? Yeah. And we're going to start moving all those questions in there, and we're going to be a little bit more, more visible helping you with that sort of thing. Yeah. Because that's something we want to support, and we appreciate your efforts thus far. Absolutely. Just be careful what kind of map you use. <laughs> <laughs> Could get really grim in there if you load up a like. Whoa, what area is that? That's well, not a cavern. Look, it's the creativity <laughs> of the community, man. Okay. <laughs> I don't right. know what you're getting at, but sure. All right, thank you guys so much, and we will be back next week with more stuff. Um, see you on the forum. See you on social media. And again, thank you guys so much um, for being around. We really do appreciate it. Right? Absolutely appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. Error. 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 Error.